Hi again, this is the second video for Friday. I didn't leave enough time to talk about conclusions in the last video, so we're going to do that first in this video. And then we're going to talk about titles, and then just a couple of small elements I'm seeing in your writing responses, um, like indenting paragraphs, stuff like that, how to do dialogue. So I will briefly explain those at the end of the video. So. In the first video, we talked about showing versus telling in terms of a more specific outline and also focus. So we left off talking about focus and the conclusion. Um, I said basically at the end of every scene or body paragraph, you should have a sentence, maybe, maybe two, that explains why this story matters in terms of your theme not necessarily your life, or you're not defending it in terms of your life, but why it fits in with this theme, and then how it compares to other stories. So scenes two and three, or four if you added a fourth one, those will be how you're comparing it to other scenes. That might be as much as a transition sentence. So um, the first sample paper that we talked about a lot, the one, uh, The Short Life of Imagination, with the Loss of Childhood, um, the author does this, that author does this really well. So he explains essentially, or he links essentially, the scenes together uh, within the paragraph. He does not wait until the conclusion to link everything together. You may wait until the conclusion to link everything together. However, just be consistent with it. If you start linking it in the first body paragraph, then I, I, as a reader, will expect to see some sort of link in the second and the third. And then this, you might focus on how this changed you overall or changed your perception of something, what resolution you arrived at, etc. Some other ways to approach conclusions, because I think they're one of the most difficult paragraphs to write in addition to your introduction paragraphs. One way to do it is to think about predictions, solutions, or consequences. So, did you have a theme that where you failed or something, or you um, triumphed over that failure? What's your prediction for your future? If this is the kind of character that you have, how if you have a good track record, or if you are continually continually succeeding, then your prediction might be optimistic. Is there a problem that you presented in the paper? If so, then you should probably present a solution here and not leave the reader hanging. Um, are there some kind of consequences? So consequences is similar, consequence is similar to prediction, except consequences are normally negative. So hopefully not too many consequences in your narrative papers. The other thing you could do for your conclusion is um, add a reflective, retrospective, embedded, or projective conclusion. And we're going to talk about what these mean in this video right now. So on eCampus, I have posted a conclusions document. We're going to go through that document. It's under coursework, papers, narrative, where again, all of your reading material will be for this unit. It's called Types of Conclusions, okay? So I already have it pulled up here, and it has four types, the four that I just read off to you, and all of them can be appropriate for the narrative paper. You um, might just think after we go through this, which one you are already planning to do, and how that may work as an embedded, retrospective, reflective. These terms are kind of artificial, and I'm not asking you to remember them. Um, I'm not going to quiz you over anything like that or anything, as I mentioned in a previous email, but um, embedded. So in some cases, especially with the narrative essay that tells the personal story in chronological order, again, please avoid chronology, at least with your introduction being like a flash forward in time. The conclusion can be the last paragraph of the body. Yes, that's clear. For instance, if you're telling a story of how you learn the English language, the last paragraph brings us to your current state of increased confidence mixed with lingering cautiousness, then that last paragraph gives us a solid place to park the scene. So basically the embedded conclusion is just bringing us up to speed with where you are now in your current life. So this might be appropriate for the narrative paper if you're talking about something you experienced in high school or in your childhood or um, something that you want to do in the future. 
where are you now so that you can achieve all of those goals or remember those histories. A retrospective conclusion for a narrative essay or for any essay that uses chronology or traces any historic movement, you may want to consider retrospective conclusions. This concluding paragraph uses hindsight to consider what came before with new insight gained from experience. So this might be a paragraph that says, um, I would have done something differently or I would continue to do this, etc. It's the hypothetical almost, okay? So you're retrospecting and you're hypothesizing what could have happened. The reflective conclusion is similar to the retrospective kind, but it allows a broader train of thought as one considers the various themes, lessons, or insights that have emerged from the essay writing experience. So this is very similar to the retrospective, oh, yep, it just said that, but um, you can relate it more to your overall theme, um, and this is not necessarily I would have done something, this is more like I, I will or um, it's, I wish I could, okay? So it's just a difference in the conditional form. The last one, the projective conclusion. This type of conclusion works especially well for research papers, but can be used for more expository essays and some narrative ones as well. It involves projecting a future outcome of the circumstances you describe. It may project the negative results of a social issue if it remains unresolved or a threat to humanity. In other contexts, this conclusion can state a need for further research in an area to enhance our understanding, or it could predict an interesting, unexpected outcome based on current trends. So this most closely aligns with um, predictions and sometimes consequences, and this you'll probably be using mostly in your other two papers. So the other three might be more appropriate for the narrative, but um, you can decide on that. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to titles. We'll do a brief lesson on those. I have actually pulled some sample titles from students um, in the past, all of their narrative papers, and we're going to go through them quickly and uh, talk about what needs to be in a title. Okay, so this first title, Lessons of a Lifetime. First off, titles should be centered. And um, if you have, say, your name here, and then double space, my name here, date, their paper, then the next line, you will still have a space here, okay, between these two. And then the next line, you start your title. It is, as you can see, all the same font, format, etc. Sometimes I get titles that are like size 80, underlined, folded, crazy. No. Just reduce all the frills and it just is centered and that's enough to set your title apart. So then the next line, since it's still double spaced, will be here and you indent your paragraphs. And some of you are not indenting paragraphs, I'm not sure why. But, um, yes, stick to those basic rules when you're writing. So, lessons of a lifetime. My first approach to your papers is I'm going to see the title first. So, this will set some of your tone for your entire paper. If you have a strong title, I'm already going to enter reading your paper um, thinking, okay, they've spent time on this. Um, they know what they're doing. There's a confidence to their work and they care about this this class, this work, etc. Okay, so titles are extremely important as well as any type of introductory element. So, lessons of a lifetime. What does this tell you? If you are sitting and um, getting ready to read this paper, or if you're even scrolling articles on Facebook or BuzzFeed or wherever, would you stop to read this? It had no pictures, just lesson of a lifetime. Lessons of a lifetime. If you said yes, then you're more generous of a reader than I am. I would immediately skip past this. The reason why is it's too vague, it's too general. So titles should be specific and creative. Those are the two main words that I'm going to use to describe titles for all of time. 
Okay, so specific. I need to know what we're talking about in this paper. What am I getting myself into, essentially? Okay, lessons of a lifetime. This is so vague and so general that it can apply literally to anyone. Okay. The creative aspect is not as important as specific, but when you get further in this class, I'm hoping this will come out a little bit more, and we're going to take a look at some good examples of titles later on. So let's move on to our next one. All right, best of both worlds. What does this make you think of, other than maybe Hannah Montana? I can't really think of anything. I don't know what the both worlds are. Um, I'm assuming this is going to be a positive paper. Uh, it has a positive connotation with the word best, but <clears throat> it's too vague. Again, the same issue as the first one. <clears throat> Life for granted. So this is playing off of a cliche. This one you've all heard, taking life for granted. However, it offers me no new information in terms of what, what's, what life, what are you talking about? Are you talking about your life? Um, taking it for granted is that it normally means something negative. It can mean something positive, but it's, again, too vague. All right. This is kind of a joke, but... Um, this is just telling me that you intend to put a title there, but you couldn't think of one. So try to avoid this because if you do put a title, I will help you with that title, okay? If you put title here, I'm just going to mark not done and then pass it on the syllabus. All right. This one's even worse because you said to yourself, oh, I got to put a title, so I'm going to put narrative paper. This even shows um, some acknowledgement that you are not going to put a real title, okay? And then, even kind of worse, <laughs> some smart asses out there might say, my narrative paper, all right? So just please don't play jokes and uh, avoid all that. All right, now we're getting into good titles. The Nerd Awakens. So this is a play off of an actual, you know, the seven Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. So this student's paper was all about how his nerdiness and his comfort with himself grew out of his love for Star Wars. So this is an appropriate title. It's uh, humorous. There's some character there. It is still simple. Um, it is somewhat vague, but it's. I know it's, we're going to be talking about Star Wars. I know we're going to be talking about probably the perceptions of Star Wars. And it is creative. So this would be an A-plus title. All right, this one, um, The Road to Aokai, um, this is at least specific. So it's not super creative, but I know we're going to be talking about Aokai in this paper. Maybe The Road is the, the, the weaker part of this title. Don't put, like, The Journey or The Road or The Life. Again, avoid those vague things. Stick to the concrete. Meeting the love of my life at 21. So this is a uh, specific more so than creative. We know that we're going to talk about age. We know that we're going to talk about um, falling in love. And this student actually had a twist because um, she was, she had a son and um, at 21. So the love of her life is not a partner. It is her son. So it's a little bit of a twist there where you, with your expectations. Immersion therapy. This might be a little bit too general, but it's still stronger than like life for granted. Um, immersion therapy, this student was a veteran and he talked about um, PTSD and his time in the war. Here's a good way to play with cliches. So life is bittersweet, but mostly pretty sweet. So this part here would be a terrible title. It's a cliche. I would um, put not done or I would put focus for revision. But mostly pretty sweet adds another layer. It says, I've acknowledged this is a cliche and I'm going to play with it and I'm going to make it put a little bit of a more positive spin on it here. All right. We're getting, we're running out of time, but another thing you can do is um, put a quote from your paper and also um, put your actual theme in the title. Okay. So make sure that you're not using second person, you make sure you're centering your titles 
don't center your dialogue and um, indent your paragraphs and add some breaks to your paragraphs, not whole chunks of text. All right.